Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I have some really great tips to show you with the two-step stamping. I think you're going to love it and I'm going to share my color combinations with you because I did get to play around with this a little bit and find out what works best. I am featuring the Gourd Goodness stamp set here. This is a great stamp set for fall. As you can see, these pumpkins look so realistic. They are just mouthwateringly beautiful. And this stamp set also has some leaves in it, so it is great for fall. Let's get started and I'll show you how I did this. So I've got my cardstock layers here and we're gonna make the pumpkin card first. So I've got a scrap of very vanilla, a piece of our copper foil paper, which is beautiful, copper is very popular, a piece of crumb cake that is three and three quarters by five and a quarter, piece of very vanilla for our inside layer. This is four by five and a quarter. And then I'm using early espresso for my card base, which is five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half and burnish my edge. I'm gonna set these two aside and I'm going to bring in my scrap. I am using the stitched shapes. This gives us that neat little stitching around the edge while it cuts out a circle. This is the biggest circle that's in that pack. So I'm gonna die cut this real quick on my Big Shot. I'll be right back. And here we go. You're almost always gonna find me stamping first and then die cutting. But for this, we're using a photopolymer stamp set, which means it's clear rubber, and you can see exactly what you need to do. I'm gonna bring in my paper piercing mat. I always love to use this when I'm stamping, especially with the photopolymer stamps. You're gonna get a better image. So if you find with these clear rubber stamps that your image isn't stamping very good, you need a, a very firm padding under it, and it'll work a lot better. The ink colors that I've chosen for this card are Crushed Curry, Early Espresso, Crumb Cake, and Pumpkin Pie. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in my Crushed Curry. With this two-step stamping process, you get a bold set of pumpkins and then a set that's a little bit more detailed. We're going to take the bold pumpkins and we're going to stamp them in crushed curry, which sounds absolutely crazy because why would you make a pumpkin yellow, right? I'm, I'm sure maybe there's yellow pumpkins. I don't know. But we're going to stamp this first and that's what we have. And that's just kind of goofy looking. But once you bring in this pumpkin pie ink with the detailed pumpkin, and you need to get right over top of this so you can see it. You're going to stamp directly over your crushed curry pumpkins and this is what you get. This pumpkin looks so realistic, it was just shocking to me. Now I'm going to bring in the other one. For this color combination I use Peekaboo Peach for my bold pumpkin and then pumpkin pie ink for my detailed pumpkin. So you can see the difference here. And I really like the crushed curry. This just really highlights the what a real pumpkin looks like because oftentimes they're not that solid orange. And it kind of puts some highlights on there. I just think it's so pretty. Okay, let's keep going here. I used an aqua painter because I didn't want my pumpkins to just be sitting out there and never, never land floating around. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit of water in here. I'm using the larger of the two aqua painters because we don't need a great bit of detail here. I've got just a little scrap of paper. I'm gonna kind of dissipate my ink. Oh, look, I've got stuff stuck all over me. Dissipate my ink just a little bit and I'm gonna come in here and just kind of put down a little ground here. And that's it, it's just that simple. Now to clean your aqua painter, you just flick it back and forth until there's no more color on it. And be careful when you put that lid on because if you're not paying attention, you could push back some of your bristles and that's not really good for your aqua painter. Once I have that done, there's all these little stems. 
So we've got a tall set of stems and a little shorter set of stems. And I used crumb cake ink for that. I'm gonna use my taller one on my bigger pumpkin. I'm just gonna stamp that off once and then stamp it right on there because this detailed one needs to be a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna stamp that right over top and aren't those cool looking? Again, very realistic looking. The bold or solid stem and then I'm bringing in the more detailed stem and I am not stamping off once for that. And isn't that just beautiful? Okay, we're gonna pop this up on a few dimensionals. So I'm just gonna add those to the back. You guys know I love my dimensionals. And I'm gonna set that aside for right now. We're gonna bring in our crumb cake layer. And all I did for that is I brought in the crumb cake ink and the very detailed stamp. Now again, you get two stamps in this set. One doesn't look like it has as much detail on it as the other one. So I'm going to use the detailed stamp and I am just going to stamp this around. Again, crumb cake ink on crumb cake cardstock. So they call this a tone on tone. And this is just my background, which I think is perfect for this card. So I've randomly stamped that around. Next, I've got a piece of our burlap ribbon. This is perfect for all your fall projects, and I really like to use it for Christmas, too. I'm using regular scotch tape to just tape that to the back. And now I'm not gonna pull this real tight so it's firm. I'm gonna leave it just a little bit loose because we're gonna tie some ribbon around this, and I don't want it making my card buckle because I've made that too tight. That's just a little tip when you do something like this where you're tying other ribbon around. And this is our copper trim. This stuff is gorgeous and it's very interesting looking because it's almost like a netting or a webbing. And I'm just going to tie this in a knot around here. And see how that lets us pull this up because I left it a little bit loose. This copper trim is gonna go with that copper that we're putting on the edge, so that's gonna look really neat. Okay, one other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my tape runner. I, I could have done this before I glued this down, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape runner in there so that keeps my ribbon down. I like my ribbon to stay in place. A little funny about that. I'm gonna trim this off. And then, this is so cool because you can pull this apart. Like I said, it's kind of like netting. Can you see that? Another really neat thing I've seen with this copper trim is using it with, um, especially for masculine cards, it can be the netting on any type of fish or sea, seaside looking stamp sets. It's really cool and it looks really awesome amazing with any mermaid stamp sets because this can be the netting behind your mermaid. So I've seen some really cute things done with that. Next I'm going to get out my Early Espresso ink and there's this great greeting in there that says thank goodness for you. I'm just going to stamp that down in the corner here and add our pumpkins. There's one last thing I want to do before I call this card good, and that is to tone down this vanilla layer just a little bit. And I'm going to take my Early Espresso marker, and I'm going to flick it on here just to give my pumpkin a little bit of flecking. Is that what we call that? That'll work, won't it? Can you see that on there? Just a little bit. It adds a lot of interest. I'm gonna bring my card base back in here and you can actually adhere this any way you want, but I'm going to use my snail adhesive and I'm just gonna put this right on the edge of my Early Espresso card base. 
And then I'm going to come in with my card front layer here and add that right to the front. So I actually made my um, crumb cake card front a little bit smaller than normal so I could put this accent in with the copper foil paper. Isn't that pretty? Very cool looking. And for the inside, here's what I did there. I'm gonna come back in with my crumb cake ink and I'm just gonna put some of these leaves up the side of my layer, just like that. I didn't give you much of a chance to look at that, did I? So you can see it here, sorry. Kind of just flipped that right around. I have to remember, I need to show those things. Isn't that a neat card? Now, one more thing I wanted to show you. So I've shown you the pumpkins. Now I wanted to show you the gourds. So I've got a layer here so I can play around with those a little bit. And I'm gonna use old olive ink with the crushed curry and see how they turn out. So I've got this set of gourds and then this set of gourds. So I think I'm going to, whoops, I'm gonna do my solid gourd in crushed curry and I'm just going to stamp that. I see I got a little something on there. That won't hurt anything because we're going to cover that up. And then I'm just going to leave a little bit of space for that smaller one. So I've got those three done. I'm just doing this on the fly. I haven't made this card yet. You're going to line this up right over top. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. They look so real. Okay, there's that one. Now with the other one, crushed curry again with the solid little gourd. And plunk that right in between. And then I think I will use pumpkin pie. So these will look like little pumpkins. I like that. That looks awesome. Here's my card base that I chose for this particular design. I think this is gonna look great. I don't know if I really like that leaf there. Let's, we'll think about that a little bit. I'm gonna go with Why Thank You, which also comes in this set. I think I'll put it right there. I love the font on this. And then, okay, I got it. It's coming together here. I'm gonna go with my copper trim. I'm gonna tie that in a little bow. You could use your bow tire to do this too, but I'm just gonna freehand it. It's not hard. Trim this off. Bring in my mini glue dots. Oh, when I see somebody tore the outside paper layer off that protects these, you gotta love it. People just don't understand. <laughs> when you're using these, you don't wanna tear off that outside layer. You need to keep that covered up because otherwise they'll just stick all over in your box. And I'm gonna put my bow right over here. Just like this. And then I'm gonna, again, manipulate these ends to show how cool this ribbon is. Or trim, I guess. It's not really called ribbon, it's called trim. Isn't that just the neatest stuff? I'm sorry I haven't shown this to you earlier, but it was so popular when it first came out, it was on back order right away. Who knew that copper trim was gonna be such a hot item? Um. And that's why I didn't show it to you, because it's like, oh, if you can't order it, what's the point, right? And then I'm going to put this right on here. This is another super easy card. Great for fall. 
Makes a wonderful little thank you card note. Note card, I guess. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Do I want to bring this leaf down in here somewhere? Nah, I don't like it. <laughs> Not for this card. I do love the leaf. Don't get me wrong. You saw that I put it on the inside of these and on the front. It is beautiful. Okay, let me get this cleaned up. And here we go. Two fabulous cards using the Gourd Goodness stamp set. You saw how easy these were to make. I love this, especially for fall. And you could also, you know, make some Halloween cards if you wanted to with your pumpkins. That would work too. Great cards. I love how realistic these are. They're just so pretty. So if you'd like to get your hands on this stamp set, you can hop on over to my blog. Right here's the address, www.astampabove.com. There's an order online button in the right hand column when you get there. Just click on that. It'll take you right to my Stampin' Up! store where you can order any of the products that I've shown you here. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would also be happy to send you catalogs. Please don't hesitate to pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com and I can throw those catalogs in the mail for you too. They are beautiful. I have a lot of great stuff coming to you um, in the next few weeks. Also, if you are one of my customers that has ordered from me, I have um, some exclusive projects coming out via the 12 Weeks of Christmas series that I do every year. You have to be on my email list for my newsletters to get those. And um, you also have to be a current customer of mine that places orders to get those. So that's just one thing that I keep for my customers. So again, if you want to place an order, you can get on that list. I'll add you right away and you'll be in on my 12 weeks of Christmas. I also have a series coming out that is for everyone on my blog. I have joined a design team and we are going to show you some amazing projects with our holiday catalog products. You're going to absolutely love these. If you haven't been to my blog, hop on over there. Also in the right hand column, you can subscribe. You add your email address in. My blog posts will come right into your inbox. Make sure you subscribe to my blog. Head over here Hit the subscribe button on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any more videos coming out here too. Thanks so much, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.